Hello, fourth graders. Today we are going to talk about Venn diagrams, and I've got one right here. Venn diagrams are great ways to organize um, a list or a set of data into things that are the same and things that are different from each other. And so we're going to practice that. Um, I have a list here. I have a list of animals, and I have two categories. Venn diagrams are often used with circles. Sometimes it's two circles. I've even seen ones with three circles before, but we're going to only focus on the ones with two circles. So I have two categories. I have animals that live on land and animals that live in the water. And I'm going to organize all of my animals that I have into these two categories. So I've got a list down here, horse, penguin, shark, cat, whale, cheetah, hippo, frog, and wolf. And so what I want to do is put these animals into the correct uh, category. So that's what we do with uh, Venn diagrams, is we put them in the right place. So let's start with, um, let's start with horse. Does a horse live on land or live on water? Well, it lives on the land. So therefore, it needs to go into my land circle. So I'm going to put my horse in my land circle. And I can just give myself a little check mark that I've taken care of that one. Notice, though, that I didn't put it in this middle area because this middle area is someplace. Notice it's in both circles. It's inside the blue live in water circle and it's in the pink live on land circle. So it actually has both circles, which means that any animal that goes in this middle space has to be something that lives on both. Well, let's look at an animal that lives in both. How about penguin? Penguins definitely live on land. They spend a part of their time on land. But boy, are they sure at home in the water? Absolutely. So they live on land and they live in the water, which means penguins go in this middle section because they are both things. Horses, well, they, don't, they can swim, but they don't live in the water. That's not where they like to be. So horses live only on land, so they're only in the the pink circle or the purple circle, they're definitely not water animals, so they don't fit anywhere inside this circle at all. So they're outside. So let's find one that is only lives in the water, that doesn't go in this middle area. Well, let's look at the next animal, shark. Sharks live in water. Do they also live in land? Not any shark that I've seen. So sharks live only in the water. So they have to live outside of this pink circle. So we're going to put shark over here. So now I've got an animal that lives only on land, an animal that lives only in water, and an animal that lives in both. Well, let's keep going. Cats. Lives on land, lives in water. Every cat I've known really does not like water. They hate it. They pref much prefer the land. So I'm going to put my cat over here. Whales, I have never seen a whale walking around. Maybe you have, but I sure haven't. So whales definitely live in the water and they do not live on land as well. So that's, a, that's one that goes there. Cheetah, cheetah lives on land. They're a kind of cat, so they definitely don't like that. Uh, they like to live in land, they do not like water. So I've got that. Hippopotamus. They spend a lot of time in water. But they also spend some time on land. I've seen them in both places. So that means I need to make sure that they're in the both places spot of my Venn diagram, the place where my two circles overlap. So hippo definitely goes there. Okay, dot that. Frog, another tricky one. I've seen frogs in the water, but I also know there's things like tree frogs, and I've seen frogs on land. So in fact, frogs live in both. In fact, for part of their life cycle, they're only in the water, and part of their life cycle, they're only on land. Wolf, well, wolves I've usually seen on land. They'll swim, but again, like the horse, they don't like to do it. They don't necessarily want to do it. They certainly don't live in the water. So now I've got how many, I've got my animals divided up. I've got two animals that live only in the water. I've got three animals that live in both. And I've got four animals that live only on land. 
which means how many do I have all together live on land? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that live on land, and one, two, three, four, five that live in the water. Even though I'm, and seven plus five, that's what, 12? But I've only got nine animals here. And that makes sense because I have three that live in both. So it's this middle both area that's really important that we're paying attention to. For our next Venn diagram, I want to look at uh, a set of numbers, which I have down here. Now I've got two circles again. I have this circle, the pink or purple circle. I'm gonna put in even numbers in this one. And in this one, I'm gonna put in factors of 20. So let's talk about these two things and what they mean. Even numbers, even numbers are numbers, any number that ends in two, or four, or six, or eight, or zero. Any number that ends in one of these four is gonna go in this even side. Factors of 20. Factors are numbers that get multiplied together to make that number. So I wanna know what, how, what numbers are gonna multiply together to make 20. So in order to do this, I'm gonna think about what are all those numbers. Well, I know that one times 20 is 20. What else is 20? Well, two, two times something, yes, two times 10. That's 20. Three times anything? No. Four times something? Four times five. Four times five is 20. How about five times four? Sure, that's 20, but I've already got four and five, so it doesn't matter if I put them in another order. That's still the same thing. Six doesn't do anything, seven doesn't do anything, eight doesn't go into 20, nine doesn't go into 20, 10 goes into 20, but I've already got that one there. So I think I've got all my factors, and I can actually check. I can do this. I can say, well, I have four and I have five. Those make a pair. And I have two and I have 10, and those make a pair, and I have one, and I have 20, and those make a pair, and they make a cute little rainbow, so we sometimes call this rainbow factors. So these are the factors, one, two, four, five, 10, and 20. Those are the factors of 20. So now I can look at my list of numbers down here, and I can say, okay, which of these numbers go in which place? If it is an even number, it's gonna go in the pink square, or pink circle, excuse me. If it's a, um, a factor of 20, it's gonna go in the blue or green one. And what are gonna go in the middle? Everything that is both even and a factor of 20. So let's start with the first number, one. One is not even. So it's definitely not gonna go here. But is one a factor of, tw of 20? Absolutely, because one times 20 is 20. So one goes over on this side. All right, done with one, a little check mark. Two, two is definitely a factor of 20. So it's definitely gonna go on this side. But I also wanna make sure, is it even? What do you know? It is even. So two is even and it's a factor of 20, so it goes in the middle because it has to be both. It has to fit in both circles. Done there. Four. Four is a factor of 20. Four is also even, so four is going to go in the middle. Five. Five is a factor of 20. I remember doing that because four times five is 20, but is five even? No, five is odd. So while it is a factor of 20, it is not even. So it's going to go over here on just this side because it doesn't fit in both. All right, eight. Eight is not one of my factors, but it is one of my even numbers. So I'm gonna put eight on this side, okay? 10, 10 is a factor of 20. 10 ends in zero. This right here tells me that it ends in zero, so therefore it is both a factor of 20 and an even number, so I can put 10 right there. That's done. 11. 11 is not a factor of 20. 
it ends in a one, and I don't have an, wait a minute. It's not even, it's not a factor of 20. 11 doesn't belong here. It doesn't fit in either one. What am I supposed to do? Well, there's a thing in Venn diagrams. When something doesn't fit in any one of these things, it goes outside. So we actually do a separate circle. Um, sometimes we do it up at the top, but I've got enough room down here. And this one says, this is for everything that doesn't fit in either one of these. So we could just call this everything else. This is just everything else that doesn't fit. 11 is not even. It is not a factor of 20. So 11 goes over here. 12. Not one of my factors, but it does end in 2. So therefore, 12 goes here. What if I added the number 15 to my list? Well, 15, not a factor of 20. Also not even, so 15 would go in my everything else pile over here. So we have now actually three spaces. Well, four even, if you think about it. We've got the factors of 20. We've got the even numbers. We've got everything that is both those things. And then over here, we have everything that is nothing of these things. It's the everything else pile. So now we have one, two, three, four places that we can put them. And this is going to be important when you go and do the assignment. You're going to say, you're going to click on, well, you're going to click on this one goes here and this one goes here. But be careful because some things might go in the middle. I can't put 2 over here even though 2 is even because 2 is not only even. It's still a factor of 20. So it doesn't actually go in this space. It goes in this middle space. So paying attention to what is in the middle is really, really, really important. So if you're getting your answers wrong, think about what goes in that middle space. Have fun.